I kind of see something that's going to go, ah, and then it's going to flip like in 24 hours or maybe up to the next three days. So the first initial reaction people are going to have, uh, it's not going to be a, a, a permanent reaction. I, I feel and know and I've seen that something happens, some truth gets revealed, and then all hell just like, not breaks loose, but it just seems like someone spills the can of worms. So I don't know who. Anyway, so out of all these cards, uh, the Ace of uh, Realization came up. And mind you, I shuffled a random deck of like uh, 150 cards and these fell out. So when we talk about Ace of uh, Realization, this is like the ultimate, it's kind of like uh, when something is completely revealed, when people completely see things for what they are. So like, let's say if there's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Yes, you have a nice day too, Gloria. I wish I can dance online. I gotta find, um, I think SoundCloud uh, just got its rights on Facebook. So we can actually use SoundCloud music to uh, do more dancing. So I'm happy about that. That was yesterday. Um, that was actually something in a ballot because uh, I did my vote early yesterday and there was a ballot about um, uh, rights and things like that. Anyway, moving on. So Ace of Realization. This means that this is the all seeing. The next one was Lilith. If you guys don't know, we are actually, Black Moon Lilith is in Aries along with Mars. <laughs> it's a hot mess. So there's going to be a rebellion. Lilith, if you don't know who she is, she was the uh, allegedly the first wife of Adam before Eve. Uh, Lilith was not created by God. She was a being from the outer realm of Eden. And uh, Adam wasn't man enough for her, so she rebelled. But also in uh, Sumerian uh, Western uh, history, Lilith is a, she's part bird, part reptile. Uh, if you know about the Anunnaki, she is actually an, a gigi. And gigi are bird people or a fallen angel. So power. This means that uh, it will be deceiving because it's Lilith, but then someone's going to be taking power. And whoever, it, it's almost like, let's say someone wins. And then if someone sabotages the authority, what they're doing is they're taking the power. So this is what's going to happen is uh, there's going to be a controversy coming up. So I don't want to name drop because I don't want people getting all upset, but it seems as though the wolf in sheep's clothing is not Trump. The wolf outside of the wolf sheep, uh, outside the wolf that's, a, that's already out, the shark is Trump. But then there's someone who betrays um, his honor, his authority. Something happens where something ain't going to go right. Get the next card. Um, I like this one, Sacred Fire. Yes, it is uh, the first founders of Persian culture. Uh, before it was Persia, it was uh, um, what was it called? Not Turtle Island, but was it Mir Mir Mira? I forgot what, what the territory was called. But uh, if people don't know, the Garden of Eden is actually real. It's uh, in some part of uh, Afghanistan, and that's why we've been in war with uh, the Afghans, because the territory of what belongs to the true children of Israel is being, I guess, uh, held captive. And so what I was trying to share with people about this election 
stop looking at the personalities of Biden and Trump. It's not about that. It's 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 hard to say this, but you have masonry versus Zionism. And it's best to have the wealthiest side do the things to um, free Eden from being held captive by the Afghans. Whereas the other side, Zionism, actually uh, gets a profit off of war. They profit off of weapons. So therefore, you will not see uh, Eden freed if you have uh, Zionism uh, in charge of America. So now we're going into a metaphysical explanation. So sacred fire. Sacred fire means that uh, all people who have faith and hope and uh, determination, passion, maybe let's say the supporters of either side uh, are really going to be um, doing their all, doing their best, doing their rituals. I think rituals are, are fine. You know, someone Christian uh, talked to me last night and she's like, I, I feel like it's okay and appropriate to, to do these rituals, but I'm just a little bit nervous because I don't want to disappoint God. And I was like, girl, if God created you in his divine image as spoken in the word, um, you're only working as him when you're doing a ritual. Same as the Native Indians, same as uh, the uh, Mayans. Uh, your ritual that comes from your heart, you have to put your intentions from your heart onto uh, the purpose of why you're doing it. So you know me, I'll, I'll burn a candle, I'll burn sage, but my intentions are to purge, clear, and purify, even myself. The next card that I had, I'm sorry, let me read your comments here. You are kind, you're very loved by God. Thank you. Um, God is in definite control. And that's the thing too is, I think people have lost that uh, sense of, you know, sometimes you gotta go back to the old school. You gotta go back to the Bible old school. I'm not Bible, church old school. Remember that God uses people in ways that you may not know. He might utilize someone that you don't like only to uh, bring people to a united front. You know, if I were to interpret uh, the last few parts of Revelations, we're actually, Kroger is me, we're actually completing a lot of stuff from Revelations. Um, there was a scripture that talked about um, the visitor from the north comes to the land of the children of God. And when he speaks, listen to him. So when I saw that, I was like, oops, Trump put his hand on the wall in Jerusalem. And, and see, that's where people always mess up because they think that uh, evil people cannot do the work of God or, you know, but we are all created in the same divine image. We're all utilized as instruments of the creator, of the father, of the heavenly father, of the uh, almighty, you know. Um, hi, Sharina. Hi, Gloria. Yeah, right. And I always say like when people are upset at someone and you have this like animosity towards this, uh, it's just frequency. Let's say, cause you never met the person, but you're just mad because everything you heard about them is, you don't know, but everything you heard about them is just disgusting because that's what you heard. But then you're also being upset at what the creator had proclaimed as himself. So I always think like, God can't be upset. He can't be like a meanie head. He's not gonna uh, throw fireballs on earth. He's not gonna blow us up. Because if something is of a pure essence and made in his own divine image, he only is going to split himself into different pieces to gain experience in all perspectives. Kind of like um, when I work for a dance studio and I am told to do hip hop, a lot of times I'm like, 
you know, I could do ballet. I could, I could do a lot of stuff. I could do break dance. I could do kids jam. You know, there's so many different uh, territories of someone's source, their essence. I appreciate you guys with these comments. God knows our inner thoughts. I, I agree with that. I'm going to go deeper than that. God knows your heart's intentions. So, like, let's say that in order to get a money bag, you will go and have to do some dirty stuff, sabotage a lot of people. And and there was an interview with Trump about uh, he was on The View when he was running his campaign. And The View, they were really nice to him then. They were very cordial, laughing, giggling. But he said a couple of things that stuck out to me. He said there's a lot of dirt. There's a lot of crookedness. And it needs to change. And then I think when uh, God spoke through him in front of national TV, it, ex it, it sort of made the people who do that nervous. And the people who are nervous because he's on to something are retaliating by creating this uh, narrative that he's a, a horrible, disgusting racist. Racist is really like, people that are in jail are racist. Because uh, let's say someone didn't like a particular race and they just hit the person for no reason. Or when they're drunk, they hit somebody because I don't like Asians. Bam! That's racism. When you physically assault someone because you, through the bottom of your soul, do not wish their culture to be here, they don't belong here, that's racism. All right, so we're moving on to the next one. These two cards are very interesting because I pulled the world. So what happens with uh, whoever is, I say selected, even though we voted, but it's a selection. <laughs> whoever is selected uh, will have a very important, um, it's like they are, it's almost like their responsibility is the world. And if they screw up, actually, this is not going to be them screwing up because it's a, it's, it's a Gaia card. Gaia is Earth. So there will be a movement within the Earth, a transcendence of the world. And maybe, possibly, after this election, we take off the masks. <laughs> and then what was fascinating, the card after that was um, the Great World. And that's what was interesting because we all, I'm sorry to say his name, but Mr. T, he always says great, 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 great. Just great. What's great? When this said uh, the great void, I was like, he has to complete what he did. It's almost like when someone had committed crimes over time and got away with it, and now they're at a point in their life where their child is looking up to them. Their family is, you know, constantly getting death threats. So how would you protect your family, protect your empire, and still raise your son and have grandchildren? Um, you got to do the great void. You got to do the right thing. Which basically means um, own your accountability who is at my door? Uh, own your accountability. Uh, own your actions. And that's why I commend certain people who are quiet. <clears throat> like, I started talking to somebody recently. We're moving a little bit too fast. But um, he's someone who doesn't express. He doesn't say anything. He doesn't... Um, he, 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 I don't know. We got into, like, a weird... We got into a weird uh, vibe yesterday. Because I express i over express i i i share everything because i guess for me my resolutions resolve itself my conclusions resolve itself or my situations i endure my pain my hurt my suffering i resolve it when i speak because i'm speaking from my heart and so um for him when i was doing that uh it actually was a strike two for me he's like I don't, I don't do the open expression thing. I, I, what you deal with in your own time, that is on you. He's like, I'm a positive, uh, bold person. I have, it's almost like 
living in a bubble where his bubble is everything is great everything is peachy key it's almost like like the trump bubble he doesn't like trump but i was like boy you got a lot of common with trump you could do something wrong but you'll never admit it because you're in your bubble you're and i commend that because it, it's the secret it's the power of um vibration creates a vortex and so your vortex is basically uh, when people are booing you, you're actually like, oh, they're cheering for me. <laughs> they love me. Or when you piss people off on Twitter, it's like, good, I got their attention. So that's a vortex. Um, nothing can taint or shatter um, your focus or damper you. Like there's no Debbie Downers in your crew. But the great world showed me that uh, Trump does play a role with, I don't know what Aditi is. Aditi, the cosmos. I think this has a lot to do with uh, the Space Force because uh, we really do need the Space Force uh, to investigate NASA and all these other things because we are, we've been told we've been in the space, we've been told we've been to the moon. Um, China allegedly has technology to um, simulate the sun. They can create a moon. So um, we need an agency to investigate. And that's why I was saying to people, you can't judge a book by its cover because I think it's a front when someone's acting like a jerk on purpose it's probably because they want people to look that way while they create this secret agenda over here so I think this would be the exposure of what's out there in the cosmos it will be a um, something will be disclosed something about space the cosmos the universe um, other races yeah the great world. Oh, no, the great void. <clears throat> and the last one that I'll share with you guys before I go. This is the high priestess. And if you guys don't know the high priestess, <clears throat> allegedly the story of the high priestess or the uh, empress card in the real tarot cards. Um, I like high priestess because this has a lot to do with um, divine... Who's talking to me? Anyway, uh, it has to, a lot to do with divine uh, creation. Um, oh, that's the tamales guy. Uh, <laughs> this person, basically the, the high priestess, she is known as a reincarnation over and over and over. So the story is that in the garden, she was Eve. And then when she took... See, the thing about it is Adam and Eve didn't have a choice but to eat from the tree of knowledge. Because um, if you study Kabbalah, uh, they have this little graph and it's called the Klepo. And the Klepo is the um, geometric version of the tree of life. In astral theology, they use um, the astrology circle with all the zodiacs. And in the medieval times, they told you the story of King Arthur and, you know, the knights. In biblical times, they told you about the 12 disciples. So all of that is the same thing told in different eras. So the high priestess, she remanifests herself in different eras as well. Like she's always having to be involved with each paradigm shift. So um, Isis was the next uh, reality of Eve, in my opinion. And then after Isis was, was it Cleopatra? <laughs> and then you had, oh, I'm trying to think, the Virgin Mary. And then you had Lady Guadalupe. Then you had Fatima of the Eastern Trend, uh, trend was it <laughs> the Easter tradition? So you had Lady Fatima, Lady Guadalupe, the Virgin Mary, Isis, and Eve. So this is kind of the evolution of knowledge where I think if you were to entertain the theory of why are we here on earth? Why is this matrix created? What are we enduring? Um, it's really like we all started off as these uh, unconscious of our nudity right unconscious of the world we live in it was just the pair it was a paradise but 
being curious of knowledge, being being able to tap into the mysticisms like King Solomon. Oh, that's my proof too. King Solomon was like uh, the master of of because uh, you know like uh, the Old Testament when Moses said you know thou shalt not this and that and it was the Ten Commandments. King Solomon was like f that. <laughs> I'll make my own potion. And there's also manifestations of King Solomon. You had uh, Merlin from the uh, King Arthur era. Um, you had uh, Eckhart Tolle. And then who was a bad guy who stole all that data and information? Who was it? Alistair Crawley. So Alistair Crawley indoctrinated... Um, the mysticisms of King Solomon, which Jesus actually knew how to replica things as King Solomon. So the metaphor is turning wine into water. That means alchemy. That means manifestation. That means faith. That means belief. That means um, not doubting yourself. So long story short, um, Alistair Crowley, his dumb ass, um, manipulated i guess i think it was in the early 19 or the mid 1900s he was able to tap into these whole things long story short so everyone knows the illuminati so in order to have be a member of that uh, uh acclamation or the title you had to study uh alistair crawley's philosophy you had to learn um the the story of solomon and then you also you have to learn astronomy, astrology, um, astrotheology. So there's so many different versions of so many different stories. And I'm happy that I'm, I have the gift of discernment where I can see all the different stories and I can actually just merge them together. And it makes sense. So in conclusion, I would like everyone to, because tonight's going to be crazy. And I'm telling a lot of folks that my gut feels like if things turn where someone's reelected, I really do feel that <clears throat> biblically we'll go into the three days of darkness. Whereas in scripture, they say, you know, uh, barricade yourself, shut your windows, don't look outside. Every uh, entity, every force, every creature from the abyss will be released. So it doesn't mean like monsters and zombies are going to be running around. It just means that all of the pain, hurt, trauma, and um, afflictions that people had endured that haven't been released, when they are pissed about Mr. T and he gets, let's say if he gets reelected, you're going to see the worst of everybody's, uh, red, what do they call it? The, the the resin that's left over from people being angry and upset and pissed at everything. Then there's the people who have been in uh, poverty, the people who are hungry and starving. So everything may come out. So I, I just say everyone just prepare. If you don't have to go out to go to work um, or if you work from home, I would say just be safe, have faith, be confident, know nothing's going to harm you. Um, Build that line within, build your roar. And also, um, don't go outside until November 6th. It'll be kind of clear when things are. I think that's what it said in scripture. And I'm not like a Bible person, you know, but I, uh, because my grandmother was a minister, um, I did pay attention to uh, the word. And I think the word plays a big role in everything that's happening right now. Like literally everything's happening. <clears throat> so after these three days of darkness, there's this seventh seal that's broken. And so a lot of people think that it'll be this great earthquake and there'll be this tidal wave, blah, 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 blah. I think what that means is, um, in a sense, that there's a great shaking because too many people with that much energy and frequency that's uh, heavy, I won't say dark, but it is, um, it's not in gratitude. That might penetrate the earth and the Schumann resonance. So if the Schumann resonance uh, peaks and there's a solar flare 
or what is, the, is that what they call it? Solar flare? I think there's a solar flare. That means in three days from the solar flare, uh, it hits the tectonic plates and the earth has a shift. So these are all things that I'm predicting that might happen within the next three to four days. <clears throat> The Revelations is not a third. No worries. No, it's not. Revelation, it's funny because if you were to go back 3,000 years ago and you were to tell a story about fire chariots in the sky, <laughs> uh, nowadays you would call that uh, uh, like a fireball or um, those lanterns that you, you know, or maybe people thought they were flying horses, but maybe they were just birds. Maybe they were just birds and in the sun they glare. I don't know. Um, and then the last part, they talked about the seventh seal. So the seventh seal, I did not see that as this huge, big earthquake that's going to destroy a third of the world. I saw it as the crown chakra because this is the seventh chakra. And basically, when you have coronavirus, I think it was code for um, the seventh seal is nearing itself. So if this whole um, lockdown pandemic, it's weird because I heard that it's calming down, it's flattening. But then we just had Halloween, so it's going to peak. And then I heard Paris is on lockdown again. So... Whenever we think lockdown, pandemic, eat outside, outdoors, 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 the crown chakra is nurtured by the sun. The sun is what produces melanin. So that to me is the seventh seal. So when this chakra, uh, it has to open, it has to be penetrated by light in order for us to be completely free from this bondage of this damn earth. And what's happening is I always thought like when you meditate and you concentrate your chakras, um, I thought you were to unblock your chakras if they're blocked. I didn't know that you were supposed to uh, like break, not literally break them, but you're to free yourself from your chakras in order to be completely in the light. And this is what Jesus did. This is how he ascended. He was like, Ooh, I'm gone. <laughs> um, and also, too, if you think about his wounds, uh, he had a nail at his root, which is his feet. Um, his solar plexus, he was stabbed. Uh, he was celibate, so that's his sacral, which means his melanin was able to go through his kundalini, his spine, uh, faster than anybody. Uh, anyone who's celibate, you can actually uh, survive a lot of illnesses, viruses, because your melanin, which is what protects your skin from the sun, actually absorbs more nutrients from the sun. Your body knows how to produce more uh, probiotics and good bacteria. That was a lot of information, you guys. Um, Gloria, you talked about the two covenants. The last prophetic thing that I got, I don't know why I'm doing all this today. I just felt like I needed to like say it. The two witnesses, as they talk about, they say Elijah and Moses are the two witnesses. Or they say, um, who's the other one? Enoch, which is not mentioned in the Bible. Why? Because Enoch had more um, literacy to the metaphors, uh, there were 16 chapters that were removed from the Bible. So a lot of them were attached to Enoch because he was black. And he was from the kingdom of Beersheba and they were migrating from the tribe of Judah. And the fact that they were able to migrate in the sun would be evidence that they were black because they were able to, to sustain the, the sun that long. Same with Moses and the people. Um, let my people go for Moses was more about uh, allow them to not have slavery so they can work on their chakras. The seven days that were created by God in Genesis, seven chakras. <laughs> um, there's a lot of symbolism there. Uh, yes, but we're at the we're at the last chakra that needs to pop. 
And Trump was actually responsible of uh, helping people uh, detach from uh, holding on to their chakras. Like if you were mad and your heart was like, oh, that man, your chakras are opening. And I think it's the energy of unfamiliarness. Something's not familial, which is why people are responding out loud. And now that we think that someone is a racist and we think that someone is blah, 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 that's all in the head. So the crown is the last part, it's the last work of uh, the spiritual consciousness of this universe. Anyways, I'm gonna go. But what I'm gonna do tonight, uh, because I am in Long Beach, I am really nervous because, I mean, if it does go to Biden, it'll be fine. Like everybody will be chill. A lot of us who are in the uh, clairvoyant department, we know a lot more to the agenda of Kamala Harris and Biden. And we've been trying to tell people that people don't resonate. Because people are on different conscious densities. So some people, their their consciousness is like, I wake up, I have my coffee, I go to work. Um, at home, I cook, you know, I'm a vegan, blah, 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 blah. I have my kitty cat. That's like a density. That's a paradigm. That That's one reality. But there's other people like me who know that there are deeper rooted corruption and things like that. So... We know that if if it goes to Trump, or sorry, if it goes to Biden, the things that were being revealed and surfaced and the things that were being investigated, like the trafficking, um, the freeing of the children, if people didn't know that, the news is not telling anybody about this, uh, about uh, the um, selling of, unfortunately, the selling of children, the body snatching, um, the extracting the melanin from children or extracting the fluid from a placenta in order to experiment, um, you know, Botox. It's crazy. It's a crazy world. But people are not ready for that stuff. Anyways, I'm going to let you guys go. I encourage you guys, if you have some time, get yourself some white candles. And uh White candles always make me feel comfortable and safe. So because I'm in Long Beach and I know people, if it goes to Trump, people are going to destroy my poor city of Long Beach. They're already boarding. There's like two intersections where every glass store has like wood covering it. So, yep. And I can't leave because I don't have enough money to uh, get a rental car and drive out of, out of L.A. County. But I also am teaching myself not to be afraid. And so part of me teaching myself to not be afraid is to surround myself with white candles. And knowing that these cards reveal to me what is going to be uh, happening, uh, I, feel, I feel comfortable. The high priestess is involved, which is the mother of mercy. There'll be grace on the land there'll be a reveal of something greater than what we know in this world. If you guys see UFOs and aliens, don't be scared, I told you. Um, something happens to the earth. Um, what card, what does this say? The world. So whatever, um, whatever afflictions happen from this election, it will it will have a paradigm shift. There might be a calamity of some sort, which will take everyone's mind off of being in that stupid human, I'm mad, I didn't get my way, I'm entitled. Sacred fire, which means um, keep your passion, stay passionate, always hold on to your gratitude. Um, don't be scared. Uh, think about fire. Fire, if, if fire had a personality, they wouldn't be scared of anything, except for water. Lilith, she's the rebel. So someone is going to, I think in politics, someone is either gonna whistle blow or someone is gonna spill the beans and it's gonna be juicy. And then the last one is realization. And wind has a lot of association with the air sign. So um, what's an air sign? Scorpio is land, 
Earth? Is it Sagittarius? Never mind. Aquarius is air. Anyways. Bye, everybody. I appreciate you guys for watching. There's like six of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you guys. And if you didn't see the um, virtual belly dance show that I was featured in, um, it's on my page. And I'm going to repost it uh, later on this afternoon. So have a wonderful day. Take care.